Hello, I'm Craig Constantine. Welcome to the Movers Mindset Podcast, where I talk with movement enthusiasts to learn who they are, what they do, and why they do it. My guest today is Victor Anderson. Welcome, Victor. Thank you. Glad to be here. I We have a little chance to talk beforehand, as everybody knows by now. And the place that I wanted to start today was to ask you about um, how do I how do I cast the language here? So imagine that I ask you to take my picture, take my portrait, and I'm curious how the subjects of those portraits are changed. I'm, I'm wondering, are they changed by having their picture taken and maybe what your process of taking their picture does to them? Um, cause I, I think it's one thing, a lot of people take pictures of movement, including you. And I think we all think a lot about how, when we take a picture or, or a video, we're capturing what's happening or we're trying to capture what's happening. And I'm curious about how having my portrait taken affects me and maybe how that changes me or how it might change me. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you started off with a hard question, um, which is awesome. Um, I mean, it, to begin, it's, it's a tricky question as well, because no one can tell you how you change during a process other than yourself. Uh, I can do my observation of what happens when I take your picture or like having a portrait session or even like, an, like a parkour photo session. Um, but the only person that has like the, um, the what's in Swedish, we have a word called the uh, tolkningsföretrade, which means uh, the right to make your own interpretation about a situation first. Like you have right away with your interpretation. And so how you get affected by portrait um, and how like the world and I get affected by your portrait, you are the one that decides first, like how mm. you are changed. However, I do, I mean, I always do see a uh, change happening in people. And when I do a portrait, I'm, uh, by, by the way, stop me if I'm getting, if I'm rambling. Um, <laughs> no, keep happen. going. <laughs> uh, when, I'm, when I'm doing a photo session, especially like a portrait um, that is less commercial and more like, portrait you in the way that i Intimate. want to capture your mm -hmm. persona and i want to capture your, your character rather than like just bashing out 20 back <laughs> portraits in, in, in an hour which i also do but uh, but like if i'm doing, doing a proper portrait session my number one uh, criteria is to make you comfortable uh, because there's a lot of people thinking it's, it's uncomfortable having their, their photo taken it's uh, it's weird they they don't feel a place and I have a numerous theories as to why a lot of people think it's hard getting or like uncomfortable having this photo taken. Um, but that's also something that I, I uh, credit myself of being quite good at is making people comfortable being around me and being around the photo set uh, and the camera and all the gear. Um, I even had a client just the other day, humble brag, that at, at the end of the session said that she was surprisingly comfortable having her photo taken with me, oh, uh, nice. which is like one of the best, which is one of the best um, uh, reviews I can get because photos can be good, photos can be bad, but if you're having a bad experience, no matter how good they are, they will turn out bad mm. um, because the photo isn't better than how you interpret it, like you as the portraitee with portrait. Mm. Yeah, I had First the same problem when I was like, how do I cast yeah. this question? It's like too many yeah. words. But you, you mentioned that you see, you do sometimes or a lot often see changes in the, I, actually, I think the word in English is the person sitting is called the subject. So you, what yeah. changes have you seen in the subject or have you seen changes or do they, you know, say afterwards, you know, oh, I, I found it to be very much, you know, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, people people have different different um, reactions. Of course, some people sometimes there can be people have be like, "Oh my God, I'm so beautiful! I am the most beautiful person alive!" They can be like super excited and almost to the point where I'm like, "Oh, okay." okay that's, that's totally <laughs> uh, but I mean, they they can have this very empowering feeling of being able to be seen in someone else's eyes because even though uh, like to begin with, the portrait is never just me taking a photo. It's never just one person. It's always uh, at least two people taking a photo, uh, me and the one with, with us. Um, and they have wishes, like if I'm taking your portrait, you'll probably have a wish, some kind of wish, like mm -hmm. I want to be portrayed as vulnerable or powerful or um, beautiful. Like you, 
there, there's criteria for all, all, all portraits. Uh, while I see you in a certain way, and uh, that the um, idea there, idea there is to get our vision, visions of a portrait to interlock. Uh, so hopefully we would get a portrait that both you think is like, hey, this is how I look, and a portrait that I say, yeah, I agree, this, this is the best you. Hmm. Um, and while I can see people having a very um, uh, fixed way of this is how I look. I have this side that is better. Uh, I want to stand like this. And then I'm like, yeah, but what if you try this? And what if we try this light and this setting? Uh, and if you, and then sometimes like this example where this overexcited guy, lovely person by the way, um, I can't put my the name love of my life uh, remember his name, <laughs> but his stage name is Madame Hines. Uh, he was super excited because I had him pose really weirdly, like in a very specific light that made him look like a superstar. Um, and he loved that. And he went from this like kind of position where he, yeah, I mean, he was very, very um, used to having his photo taken, but he wasn't prepared on getting this feeling of, this, this overwhelmed feeling of mm. feeling so beautiful. Um, so that change happened through the photo session that he realized that he had, um, what's the word? It's basically his perception of, of himself changing throughout the photo session. Maybe that's, that's what I'm looking to say, hmm. that I, I'm, I, I can't say what people, how people feel or how they, they, they change, but I can tell that the, um, they, um, uh, the perception of themselves might change, hmm. uh, whether it's how they see themselves or how, un how like how comfortable they are uh, on the on the set. Um, I can't say I'm changing people's lives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm not, but uh, that that's the only the only um, change I can perceive as like a second person. Uh, because you, in the end, it's it's only you. The, the do you find that how, when how people? Change. Sorry, do you find that when you? Um, I don't know what the balance is of how much portraiture versus how much movement photography you do, but <clears throat> based on what I've seen, you do a lot of both. So it's not like you're dabbling in one and you're a master. It looks like you you're, you really do both of them. And I, I'm, it, it feels to me like if people are trying to perform in the in the movement space, if they're really trying to be performative about it, then it can feel a little um, stilted or artificial. And I'm wondering, do people do that in portraiture? Like it feels like there's something about human nature about if they're comfortable and in movement space, yeah, you're literally performing for the camera. I mean, <laughs> but in portraiture yeah. space, if you try to perform for the camera, that it feels to me like there's a deeper wisdom about if one is forcing performance, then it's going to come across a certain way versus if one is just naturally moving and naturally being when you're sitting for the portraiture. Um, and I'm, you and I had been talking about how movement is so fundamentally important to people for, for all aspects. And it seems to me like it would be easier to get that natural human when they're moving. And then when you you know, portraiture is kind of still by definition. I mean, maybe you snap the photo while they're moving, but it's a fixed image. And I'm I'm just wondering how in bringing movement in for the subject makes capturing the the real them easier when they're moving, and maybe harder when they're when you're doing portraiture. Or if I'm way off base about reading into how easy it is to capture the real Craig. Mm -hmm. Tricky question, but really great question. Um, <laughs> Part of it's I just find, me thinking out loud. I, <laughs> yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah, yeah. I, I find that, like, as you say, people have, especially in portraits, people have a very uh, um, predefined way of how they look and how they want to be. Some some people are uh, like, I only want to be shot from this side. Mm. Uh, so they, they have this, like this, I used to say they have a mask, like a, a um, um, costume of who they want to be or who they want to be perceived as. Um, and everyone can do this, and especially, especially for portraiture, because everyone is a, is a portrait photographer with their selfie, selfie camera. So everyone has a very uh, refined way of how they look, because they look at themselves every day okay. in selfie cameras, in your mirror. Everyone has a, a very refined um, 
picture of how you look uh, in your head, which is also why a lot of people is very good at like they they have this like this mask of how they uh, should look in a, in a photo, and um, that takes a lot more from a mover to perfect in uh, in in a mover photo mm. in moving a moving photo like a parkour photo you have to be a master uh, tracer to be able to fake a movement so it looks good do you see what see what i'm saying a lot of people mm. going going through like a, a kong he goes like ah, and makes his super <laughs> face his weird face i have so many great pictures uh, like a per- perfect example is a great picture of georgia monroe from london uh, where she does this like technically perfect Kong to precision. And like the, her form is flawless, but her face, she looks scared. <laughs> uh, mm. Not scared, but like she looks almost surprised. Her face is not natural uh, in, in that way. But then again, it is natural because it's actually how she looks doing. Yeah, it's movement. authentic, right? It's authentic, yeah, exactly. And that kind of um, um, authenticness is harder to get at in um, a deported because it's like there, you only think about how you look while in the, in the, in the parkour photo, you on, only think about you got to land and you don't, don't want to hurt yourself. Hmm. Um, so, so um, I don't know if that answers your question, but, but uh, like the idea of a portrait, like what I want to do is crack this, crack this mask and get into the persona hmm. beneath. So I actually have the genuine persona, like the general person, uh, coming out into the photo uh, other than their pre-defined uh, version of how they think they should look because they are usually wrong. <laughs> mm. um, they usually have an idea of how this is how I should look, but um, in my experience, a lot of people have a layer beneath that that is more genuine and, and, uh, and more beautiful um, than uh, how they think they should look because that, now I'm rambling, mm. uh, how they should look is affected yeah, no, by a lot mean. of things. Yeah I, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, and there's actually, there's nothing wrong with rambling because <laughs> when people, I ramble, you when people ramble, it helps us understand the, the people who are listening. It helps us understand, well, what is the thing that, you know, Craig is passionate about? So if I ramble about mm-hmm. how, you know, how to get the authentic view, how to get the authentic view of someone, um, then that shows that, that I'm interested in that. So it doesn't, just because we're rambling doesn't mean <laughs> the topic isn't interesting. Um, oh, yeah. way, way back, you mentioned, um, I'm always torn when I'm, when I'm talking to people and I know we're recording, it's like, oh, I only have so much time and I have so many things you mentioned about making the portrait subject comfortable and, mm-hmm. and yeah, you and I could probably talk shop about like how to make people comfortable in different mediums and, and tricks mm-hmm. and tips. And I'm wondering if there is, uh, sometimes I like to try and make, I always say weaponize, like. Are there any things that you can think of that you use that help make people comfortable that would maybe be useful for people for people also in a coaching context? Because um, first of all, we haven't mentioned the name of the portrait and the photography work that you do. We should probably do that. Um, so first question is, what's the name of your photography work, the company and the URL? So that that's in the show. All right. Uh, so it's a Swedish word. Uh, it's, it's actually a Swedish pun named Grafikeriet. Um, we have gotta have to write that down sometimes for the international <laughs> listeners. Um, and the and the URL is URL is uh, and it's also my Instagram handle. It's, I like it. It's what I use everywhere for my for my photography work. Yeah. Cool. And then, then the next question is: Is there you also teach? Um, I'm assuming you teach, but you're also part of Quality Movement. Yeah, uh, the parkour or the so. What do you what do you refer to the movement itself? Do you teach parkour? Do you teach art de placement? Do you teach a Swedish word? Uh, I te- I say I teach parkour. Uh, I find parkour to be a like this is this is like how you define it. But I think parkour is all the things. It's hmm. art de art de placement. It's free running. It's parkour. It's uh, I, I I use parkour as a collection word for all things. Um, while my and our practice is a little bit leaned into the more art and plus months to be strong, to be useful uh, kind of teaching, uh, we have a lot of um, we take a lot of inspiration from the from the, um, the founders and the, mm. the history of the parkour. Um, while we like not not be test, but like don't stray too much towards the uh, tricky, flippy competing part of the, of the um, community. So where I was going with my train of thought was you mentioned way back, like 10 minutes ago, about making 
subjects of portraits comfortable. And then I yeah. was thinking, I remember seeing Quality Movement had a post that was before you can coach, you first have to capture attention. Uh, and I think I saw that on Instagram. And I'm wondering how intentional you are when you're coaching with the process of making people feel comfortable so that maybe then they can be authentic or maybe they can open up. Because um, I'm thinking you have a lot of experience both in portraiture and in photography of movement and in coaching about making people feel comfortable. And I'm wondering what your thoughts are on how can coaches or, or people who are running small communities or big communities, uh, what they can do to make people feel more comfortable and how that plays into how those people mm -hmm. succeed at movement. Yeah. Uh, so that's, I think, having making a portrait is actually in many ways a lot similar to uh, to parkour because you are helping a person overcome an obstacle which is the uh, in parkour it is like a physical obstacle uh, maybe a a um, like a fear a fear of obstacles while in portrait it is usually uh like the fear of the situation that they maybe don't want or don't feel comfortable right. with having the portrait taken. And what I have felt is like my trick towards it is being relatable in everything, being like, uh, whatever someone says, like, I am super uncomfortable with having my portrait taken. I'm like, yeah, I know, uh, totally understand. That's why I'm behind the camera. You know that, right? <laughs> um, you're doing the hard, you're doing the hard work here. You're taking, you're having your portrait taken. I'm just pushing a button. I am being relatable in the way that I understand how they feel. Um, and then I'm saying, but that's okay. Like, we're going to make this work exactly like, like you did in the beginning before we, we talked, like we have, like, if, if this doesn't work, if this, if, if, if we're not happy with the pictures, that's fine. We, we, we will take pictures until, until they're happy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and same thing with, with, um, with movement, like it's fine. Like, of course we don't want you to fail, but if there's a, um, what's, what's the word like, um, if there's a risk, like if the risk of failing is too big, then we go down and, and make it smaller mm. and be like, yeah, it's going to be fine. I'm, I'm here. I'm helping. I'm, I'm going to stand here and help you. If it's scary, I'm going to, here, here's my hand. I'm being relatable and I'm being there for them. Um, saying that I like, I've been through this many times, both like I've done this before. I've done with these people, with, with people before. I know what you're feeling because I felt it as well. Um, mm. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, he's looking at me while I scribble notes. Um, mm. I, I, I'm, I'm so glad that you brought up the point uh, about being relatable. And I'm happy whew, that that also works in <laughs> photography because I know that that definitely works when you're trying to coach or when you're trying to share something with someone. Um, and I think that's, I, I also, in my head, I, I try not to be negative. <laughs> Sometimes my internal dialogue can be negative, but I try not to be negative on the podcast. And I know that sometimes I see situations where there are people who are, I'm air quoting, they're coaching. And what I'm watching is a, a self display. You know, I'm, I'm watching mm, a rooster, yeah. you know, and I'm just like, yeah, no, that's, that's not coaching. And yeah. the idea of like, as a coach, go be relatable. It's like, that's, that might be the single most um, effective thread for someone to pull on. So if I say, I'm going to go be a coach, it's like, okay, I have to be relatable because it's really hard mm -hmm. to fake that. Like it, it's, it's almost impossible to fake being relatable. Cause first you have to know, you have to even have had the experience to know what to say. Like if yeah. somebody is nervous about having their picture taken, you have to have actually have been nervous at some point to go, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, you know, to even make the joke about, yeah, that's why I'm behind the camera. Cause that's not really why mm -hmm. you're behind the camera. You're behind the camera because yeah. you're damn good <laughs> at it. Right. And, but they know mm -hmm. that too, but somehow that relatability um, is something that people pick up on. Uh, I'm just watching our time tick away. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm just so happy that we got a chance to talk, but I, I'll, I'll just say it 19 minutes. I'll just say, and of course the final question, three words to describe your practice. Movement or portraiture. Oh, and I just, cause it's a zoom call. I want to make sure I got that right. You said movement of. Or portraiture. Are you, ta are you referring to my movement practice or my, my portraiture practice? Uh, movement. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. I thought that was your it's answer. A, That's a, a good answer. Question. Oh, I don't no, know. No, I'm not going to answer no. that. You tell me. I mean, you don't even have to tell oh. me. You decide what you think <clears throat> portraiture means. I mean, practice means. So when I say three words to describe your practice, that's on you to do whatever you want with the word practice. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, 
if I were to say movement, it would be strong and useful. Uh, if I would say, and I, I, I want that, I want to say, say that that actually moves into my my photography work as well because I want my imagery to be strong and I want it to be useful um, because I am portraying people and a photo of a person I don't think is necessarily a good good per, uh, portrait if it isn't useful for them whether it is to portray who they are or who they uh, or their business or even being like oh, in, in the gallery it has to have a use. Um, and, it, and that, I think that comes a lot from like, I've been doing parkour for the better part of my life, life now. Um, and it hit me very hard with this idea of being useful, being uh, a helping hand for people. Um, and as I moved into photography, that was what I, I took my, my movement practice of being, trying to get a fit body to be able to help people uh, and took that idea into the photo that I want my photography to help people uh, in whatever I can help them, if it's to portray a message or just have them feel good about themselves or yeah, whatever it might be. Um, so I think um, strong and useful goes into both with a stretch. Terrific. I think that's a great. I was really curious when you wanted me to nail down practice. I'm like, I bet you you have three words that work in either case, <laughs> which is brilliant, Victor. <laughs> um, it was a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you. We've talked very briefly once before in person. Uh, and when you dropped into the calendar, I'm like, oh, yes, awesome. Uh, so thank you so much for taking the time. It was a distinct pleasure. It was uh, totally mine. And uh, I'm looking forward to meet you again this summer when I'm coming to uh, Rendezvous again. Oh, outstanding. Oh, and I'll see you in a few short weeks. Terrific. Yeah, cool.